Hi everyone, welcome back to Sala. My name is Inke Roker and I will be teaching you the Mismatch Studio this fall. And um, maybe not everyone knows me as I've been away for a year uh, working on my research. I, I am a full-time faculty at Sala, teach mainly design studios and uh, some seminars. Um, I'm also uh, a practicing architect, a design principal at AIR, a research and practice uh, studio here in Vancouver. So um, a few words maybe on the research I'm working on over a bit over a year. And it's actually two projects, twofold. One is looking to the past and one is looking to the future. I'm passionate about both of them, very different in nature, but yet I think they are influencing um, each other or at least the past to the future. Um, so I'm researching the development of multi-family dwelling in Vancouver. And I'm starting with, the, with the, when the settlers came and were building the first uh, multi-family uh, housing. Uh, to the present and just a few words about it. One thing which was surprising me uh, that we when you look through the literature we basically are in a permanent housing crisis because we started right from the beginning to now you can find literature all the way through that we are constantly in a housing crisis. So I call it permanent housing crisis. So why and how are interesting things to look at. What my focus is really on the unit itself. I find there's quite a bit of research on the building to the community scale, but when it comes to a unit scale, there's non-existing, there's no research really existing. Um, but when you look at the unit design throughout the history, you find, uh, very, you find very interesting cat and mouse game between the developing industry and the bylaws the city infuses to change, to have qualitative measures. Um, but I'm really looking forward to see all this in drawings and actually see how much has changed in size, in shape, in form, and why. So that is looking to the back and know where we're coming from and analyzing that. But then the next, the next part is, um, how inclusion shapes home and this is kind of the look forward so i'm not talking so much about the research because i can do this when i explain the studio because i would like to work with you um, on this topic and hopefully um, coming up with some really interesting ideas so what is the mismatch studio about i'm already the subtitle says we're looking at how inclusion uh, shapes uh, home and when we when we look at our current housing typologies they are extremely standardized market driven there are uh, often a poor response and not fitting um, everyone's needs and especially when we think about how we changed in society we have patchwork families we also claim we are this multicultural society, but in our built environment, that has hardly any impact uh, to none. Um, then seniors uh, were, were um, I have to say, seniors needs are more on the radar because they start to become a bigger group, and I get to this a bit later. Then also persons with disabilities uh, extremely difficult and other vulnerable groups. So when we look at this image, um, so the question is where's the mis mismatch and what is this mismatch? So the way I define this ability is that you talk about a mismatched interaction between a feature of a person's body and a feature in the environment they live in. And so when we look at the graph, the Stardust graph, so how we work right now in this industry uh, is all the market research would go to the blue circle. They would tell everyone, 
hey, this is where you can make your money. This is how the most people are. This is kind of your group. This is how it works. When you're in the yellow circle, it becomes already a bit more difficult. Certain things would probably not work for you because you're not, you're not addressed by that. But then if you are between the yellow and the, and the red, you probably can't use the environment or the design. But the way how we actually go by most popular biggest group, we always exclude, or we most likely exclude a lot of people from being equal. So uh, I like this graph because it shows, it shows quickly what we mean, the difference between equality and equity. In 2009, UN came with a resolution that everyone should have the opportunity for free and independent life. Um, that triggered from a, a top-down reaction to close homes for, for people with disabilities, as it was meant in very good spirit that people should be living in the community the same, same as everyone else. But what happened is the environment was totally unprepared for that. And so this is, this is a good example for the difference between equality and equity. Um, I'm not going to further. So the studio is really, is really exploring ideas of how can housing projects adequately deal with human diversity uh, or how can we plan for more inclusive housing, housing and community um, and what tools and methodologies do we need to learn from the experts with lived experience. And for that, I want to say lately, there's a lot of talk and workshops on how people need to be included in this process. What I've seen in these labs is totally an absence of designers um, and, and the translate, translating these ideas into built form is still an area where there's hardly any, any research done and hardly any, any people focusing and supporting um, this transition. And so the outcome, what I'm hearing from, from people involved in all in this process is, it's, it's usually uh, the providers learn at such a late game, so they have no input on the design uh, of the building. And what it perpetuates is the same kind of exclusion ideas within a building than what we had before in several buildings. Um, so there's definitely a strong need to look at this closer and how we can um, translate it into built form. So how do we get from this reactive process to a more proactive process? And in the studio, we're looking at examples I found around the world, which are not mainstream, but they're small and nevertheless, we can learn from them. And how, what do we have to change? What process do we have to change? Um, and we can only do these changes with everyone at the table. Because, I mean, we can dream about what a better world would be, but if we can't get the people who finance, the people who operate, um, the people who live there, uh, all, all in one room, maybe not in one room, in one process. Because that's another issue we discovered that there's a language barrier. All these people, the finance, the people, the operating, the user, they all speak their own language. And heaven forbid how we designers have our own language, but it's very hard to bring everyone's needs in the same language so you can actually uh, work with and um, move forward and make changes. So I laid out a process which I, call, which I almost call the mini lab of the big lab process we develop. And you see in green in the middle, this will be, this will be our studio, our studio outline. And uh, I try to bring the process, which is hard because it's a longer process than probably a three months uh, studio, and, in, and kind of fold it into the academic calendar. So you see the loop one, two, four, and um, 
and the process. So in loop one about storytelling, um, it's graphic storytelling. I bring experts in which starting to emerge on using drawings as a communication tool. And then the same, we're gonna analyze and map what we learned from these best examples to bring it in a way, in a method that it can move forward and understandable to all. Um, then the innovation mapping, this one is I'm most excited about because this is really where I hope the innovation starts shape and um, shapes something we can then just, we can then move on and prototype. And I'm really excited for the prototyping part. We have a real site. Uh, we work with the Burnaby Association of Inclusion. They got a great offer because they're sitting on a site which the city wants for building a bridge. So they are offered a new site, but they can do way more than they have now. And we are basically their, their innovation lab to figure out what that could be. So just in a nutshell, so you, we have the green is the process, how we set up the lab. And yes, you will work, you will work and share, but you all have your own projects. It's, it, you're not gonna be, you, you have your own parts, like the academic calendar will totally be folded in this process. The orange are all the experts which are coming in along the line. It looks like a total linear process. It will not, it will be a cyclic one. But just to kind of quickly get you the, the, the outline of how we are gonna work this semester. Uh, I set up the studio to be Tuesday, Friday, which is given, and I set up the Wednesday afternoon to deal more with technology issues and, and any other issues we have, which we cannot do in the regular structure. And moving on the second half, when you go into the prototyping, I'm probably going to use the Wednesday to split out the, the crit sessions, so the days will not be so long, um, and I hope that is going to work for everyone. And um, I'm not sure what else I should say right now. I'm really looking forward to test this mini lab uh, with you this fall. And I'm looking forward to see you all. Bye. Thanks.